some of you for sure. Um, I, I, I've never done this before, so I have to be patient. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Johnson Reed Associates are mechanical electrical consulting engineers with experts in the normal facets of this special ta speciality. And we try and give a personal level of service in, in, to all of our clients. Um, with regard to this sort of forum, uh, since 1995, we've been uh, working through uh, developing up, and part of that was when, when I started out, we invested uh, heavily in AutoCAD, um, uh, Simat, and other software uh, with the seed capital that I had, had managed to accumulate. Um, over time, we've grown and obviously shrunk back with the present environment, but um, We've taken a view that the way the world has gone is going into a 3D world. And as such, we've taken the entire staff have been brought out on a training course. We've all done the Revit training course now, and not brand specific. But so that with, with a view to that long-term objective to go from 2D into a 3D world, um, I was asked by Paul to do work on the CETA project. Um, and so, from the beginning of that, which is about eight weeks ago, um, um, we've attended the course in Revit. We've done some work on EcoSim. Uh, we did some uh, training in Archicad, just to co do some comparisons, because obviously it's a huge financial expenditure uh, that you're considering. And there's a similarity between all the programs in, in the way that they operate and the way you input data into them. So this was an exciting opportunity to sort of do something real that didn't have a client at the back end of it who'd possibly end up very disgruntled that you didn't perform adequately well. So the project is, sorry, the project is a, a, a building in Rolestown, which is a metal clad tassel wall uh, building that's in, in not great condition. And the aspiration for uh, Fingal County Council is to turn it into a, uh, uh, a community centre uh, type environment where you get much higher activity use. Um, oh, sorry. And the idea is that they've got a creche, they've got a retail area, they've got meeting rooms, and they have a hall which can be used for all sorts of functions. So, um, as a team, we, we met. Uh, I, 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 to develop the scheme concept, and this is somebody took a photograph of us in a meeting, but that's, uh, the way it works is the same way it's always worked. We all sat around a table, we all had a discussion about what we aspire to. The architect has a vision as to how he sees it looking and how it works, and we have a vision as to how we need to get plant around and all that sort of stuff. So the model being in 3D, we were doing this, it, based on the architect's drawing that you've all seen previously. Oddly, we were doing it on the computers as much as on the paperwork. Um, <coughs> the, the lads, just to show, and we're talking about the consistency of materials between the virtual world that we're working in and the real world. And all, it's just a, a sort of play, but this is the visualization of the real space compared with the model held up on an iPad, just to have a look at how it all works together. The space is divided into four general areas, which is the retail, the offices, meeting rooms, general purpose area, and as I said at the beginning, the crash. Um, obviously, people want to reduce energy costs, and we're looking at how you can, without demolishing the entire building, which would be maybe possibly better. Um, <laughs> Well, sorry, simpler from an engineering perspective, but, um, sorry, we, I moved on. So what we've done is, although this is only one slide, we go around each of the elements and assess what's the possible U value that you could achieve and the impact of improving the air tightness and sealing around elements of, uh, of the building and making sure that we don't have build up of condensation. And the same thing as the spot farm as everybody does, we do heat analysis and cooling loads and stuff like that. So. Um, we were going to come up with a different concept on how to um, deal with the hall in terms of uh, ventilating and uh, treating it, but because it's a lightweight structure and there's not much opportunity for really low energy solutions, and there's not 
path of solution that lends itself to this structure. We, re, re, we actually decided to reuse the original floor ducts and put some uh, a packaged unit at ground floor level for maintenance purposes. So instead of stuff being inaccessible and up out of the way, um, we've tried at all times to either put it at ground level or uh, Bernard, the architect, uh, made a plant space in a hidden uh, area at the back of the roof. Um, there were areas where the meeting rooms, which have the possibility of going from one or two people up to 30 or 40 people, did have to have some active coolness. So we put in some fan coil units in areas where the possibility was that it would fluctuate quite di differently from one day to the other. Um, <coughs> this is oh, this is all this this is all on Revit um, on the computer. Their screenshots. Um, this is the crash, and what we did with the crash was we treated it as a completely independent unit, so it can be metered separately. And in fact, the idea was we put a, a, a small heat pump in to underfloor heating, so that you don't have any uh, high surface temperatures for the children. Um, uh, and then we have heat recovery ventilation just to make sure that the place is ventilated without necessarily having to open all the windows. Um, because obviously with children around, you can't be having uh, windows opening and shutting. There's a, a, a controlling that's a bit more important. Um, in, this is a re it's called a retail unit, which is in the front. As you come through the entrance on the left-hand side, there will be this sort of friendly environment where they're going to keep uh, chairs, serve coffee. And so we did some lighting simulations to see how it would look and try and get a sense of of, of brightness through the place. Um, in the open area, what we did was, as I say, we put the air handler packaged unit on the floor, and then, although it doesn't show terribly well, we reused the original floor ducts um, to improve the ventilation through the space and provide heating and cooling. So that would modulate to match the occupancy level. So if it was low occupancy, it would trim itself back down. And it made the end users uh, system very similar to the air conditioners you see around, um, so there'd be a familiarity aspect to the whole thing. Oh, that shows it better. Yes, and this is us. We're, we're, we're <coughs> now the lighting, and this is I, we didn't actually manage to find the the prediction of our of our software. We did a similar sports hall only for refit during the Easter holidays, and the design levels that are from the software are almost identical. It's, it's very, very <coughs> reliable. The software that we're using produces such information that you can absolutely take a photograph of what's gone in from the design, and the two of them will be virtually identical. Um, and then this is just another representation of the space of the people moving through it. We, we looked at acoustics um, with Bernard, and these curved elements below the original metal deck roof. They used to have trouble with acoustic noise. Now, we did discuss about the, um, we have to come up with a plan of the detail, how that doesn't end up being a ball catcher. But at the moment, the idea is to create these acoustic areas and it creates a, a sense of space rather than just being a big metal deck shed. Sorry. Sorry, deliberately shift from whole life cycle. We did look at how, for example, where everything is located, and I'd say, although the solar panels are supposed to be angled up, um, there's a deck area there, and below it directly is the plant room. Uh, the air handling package unit is there. The heat pump, in fact, is inside the little room, but I just moved out for charity. And so we did every aspect of this place has been thought about with a view to getting in and working on it reliably and regularly. Um, we did consider, uh, this is just a screenshot of a typical BMS, and although BMS is seen for big jobs, it's come down in price and it's much more user friendly. It, pre it prevents uh, a lack of information causing further issues. So you get at least somebody who's confident gets an information screen which says that the fault is fan number one, instead of trying to find out the fan number one is the one that stopped. Um, and in terms of running costs, it allows you to control the running cost turns off, turns on, optimizes. So although it's a small community building, we'd probably put in a small base 
model, EMS, with a web access and an SMS alert for somebody or a couple of people. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I think we, we looked at uh, the architect uses ARCHICAD 16, and at the beginning of the process, we all agreed that we'd use IFC as the format, which is a format for exporting data between um, software that almost everything can get in. Um, now, there was a couple of issues which came up. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. And what happens is the image that you've seen at the beginning looks perfect, transposes into Tecla BIM site, and the delivery looks perfect. And then we get on to, it won't go into HevaComp. HevaComp wants um, the GBXML, as you know, and, and uh, IFC does go into Revit. Now, um, this is the, because I'm not an expert in Revit, and none of us are, unfortunately, but this is sort of an eye-opener of the risks that are associated with this software. Um, this wall is the source of, a sort of symptomatic of this one here. And it caused me weeks of, of grief because, in fact, in a normal project, I'd have just done a CAD drawing and brought it to Eva Oh, no, no, if I, uh, Yeah. So, um, and the other thing you'll see is the you can see the window, and the window exists in the database, but in fact, the, there's, a, there's something blocking it. Now, um, I spent ages trying to figure this out. And eventually, I went down to the trainers in Paradigm. <coughs> and he explained to me that when you look at this wall in terms of information, it's three walls. And on top of it is a tiny little sliver of a cavity, which doesn't, sorry, which doesn't show. I mean, it's useless in the sense that the information that you're being given on the screen is very poor at reinforcing <coughs> what the issues are. Um, so the only way you can find the thing that the wall when the roof was cut off should have popped up like this one, the vertical one. So the wall should have popped up to meet the next level, and it didn't. And the only way to find it is to go into 3D and move your mouse ever so slowly over the surface. And eventually you can sort of find it, delete it, and the wall pops up. So this is only symptomatic because, in fact, it took me weeks to get the model in. Um, now, of course, that's a lot to do with the fact that I'm not an expert and I don't, don't pretend. But what's interesting about Revit in retrospect after my experience is that there's a lot of these errors which are uh, instances of things not cutting anything. And the, the, this reference, A2550, is actually, actually turns out to be a wall reference in the architect's model. And eventually what we did was we sat with the two softwares beside each other to compare the errors that we were getting to the model. So we could have, have try and tease out. And over time, in fact, what we did, we, we got this to the point where instead of having a thousand errors when it came in, that it only had two or three hundred errors and arrived in you know reasonable robustly. Um, and it was never quite perfect. It never came in perfectly, but it came in quite well. Um, the next one is <coughs> Revit refused to have anything to do with the ISD file in the beginning. I mean, it just wouldn't even take it in. And so, I, as I said, we were trying three softwares at the same time. And um, this is Bentley Ecosim. Um, because I have Bentley Hevel Company of licensing, so it was only matters. And it's quite similar. But this is what it saw of, of Bernard's model. Uh, with the same issue, the, the, the same little tiny errors. And those are, these, are the, these are the screens and the doors, which is all it is. GBXML export. Now, and the, the, the odd part is that the problem that started at the beginning was the same problem that proceeded through, in a way, I restart, because the fault, and this is part of what I thought I'd learned and share with you all, was that you're better off actually just start and get the model perfect. There mustn't be an error on the drawing or the model um, of any kind. This is the tiniest error. It's cumulative. It keeps traveling along. And so we have this model here. Um, now, one of these is the model. And you can see this random building that's arrived on the right-hand side. 
One of them is modeled using spaces, and one of them is modeled using uh, materials. And so there's two versions you can export from Revit. And the, 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 the materials uh, one came out far, far better and arrived. Now, this is, this is what the building looks like in Hevercomp. And Hevercomp just wouldn't have anything to do with it. Uh, so, as I say, this is spaces. Sorry, this is materials and this is spaces. And obviously, we, we've tidied that up over time. And, and we actually, we now have a proper model that looks very similar in context to the um, Archicad drawing. Um, these are just the focus on removal was the time. Well, unfortunately, we wasted an enormous amount of time. Um, I mean, I have all weekends and nights and every morning I go in extra early just to try and get on top of this. But I'm determined to learn how to do all this. So it comes with a cost. Uh, and we've talked about cost. There is a cost. There is a very big cost. Um, and that's fine. So there have been presentations to clients. And the thing, I know it sounds really. The thing that sold me on this, first of all, is it's definitely the way it's more, a lot of the jobs we're getting in are 3D. The architects are going to be a 3D model. But the ability to show people in real time, you said about that, yes, exporting Excel files and spending hours turning it into something readable is horrible. And you can do little fly-throughs. Like, even on my phone, you can do sections and views and bring somebody up and turn stuff on, turn stuff off. It's, it has to be the way forward. If you can show somebody what they're going to get. Now. Oh yes, online discussions. We've had online discussions which are actually really obviously disconcerting like this is too. But this is a submitted photograph while we were, all of us were online. But I was able to turn on my computer and show them really what I was doing. Instead of having a paper, piece of paper and say to them, it looks like this one minute, it looks like that the other word. This, this process was reversible and repeatable, so the fault was consistent. But by being able to go, this is how it starts, that's what I do, that's what I do, that's what I do, all of the people who were there helping me were able to give me some input, which would never have happened, except we would have all driven whatever number of hours together and spent hours sitting around the table. It was very, very, that's very, very effective. And equally, that could have been the client. Because this whole thing of turning on and off walls and being able to make them see through, you could have a very reactive way of somebody saying, gosh, I didn't know that was going to be there, sort of, you know, that moment, before it gets built, which is a huge cost saving. Um, so, apparently this is, I can't speak Japanese, but it says vision without action is a danger. And I, I appreciate your patience. Thank you. <laughs>